What's up, YouTube? Wanted to share some thoughts and a graph with you. All right, so if you're familiar with athletic development and you know, strength training for sports, uh, th this type of topic, then you're, you're probably aware that um, the transfer of strength training to athletic movements is uh, a huge topic, right? Huge point of discussion. And we have a lot of seemingly conflicting and confounding uh, evidence and experience uh, in, in this area, right? So you have people who are like, oh yeah, just if, if you increase relative strength uh, over time, then it's going to make you better at everything. You're gonna sprint faster, jump higher, etc." cetera. Um, then you have others who are like, no, actually, it, you know, squats are gonna make you slower or squats are gonna kill your vertical because you know, squats aren't explosive or you know, deadlifts are too slow so they won't transfer, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and honestly, there's legitimate experience um, in, in both of those sides of the argument, right? Um, so how do we make sense of that? Here's my quick summation uh, of attempting to make sense of that. Um, the more that you have your specific athletic qualities developed, the better that uh, general strength training will transfer, okay? So, you know, if you have a decade of sprinting and jumping under your belt, and then you start strength training, you're probably gonna get pretty good transfer. If you have explosive genetic talent, and, and you play sports for your whole childhood, and then you start strength training, you're probably gonna get good transfer, okay? If you don't have genetic talent, and you don't spend your childhood playing sports, and those abilities are not in place, then getting stronger very well may not help, okay? That's my take on all that, okay? So with that in mind, the question is, well, how do we determine where somebody's at? You know, how do we know where those abilities are? How, like how, how well they are developed and whether or not they're gonna get transferred, okay? And this graph that I'm about to show you is where I've landed on that over the years, okay? So here's the graph. It's basically my version of force velocity profiling, okay? So I'm assessing strength, maximum strength with squat divided by body weight. I'm assessing explosive capabilities with uh, max vert divided by height. Take those two measurements, you find your point on the graph and you look at where it is relative to this line, okay? If you're above the line, then you jump pretty high for how strong you are. And that is a sign that those athletic qualities, explosiveness, elasticity, jumping coordination, those things are pretty well developed, okay? You have those in place. So in that situation, we're expecting that getting stronger is gonna have some good potential to help you jump higher, all right? And so the jump science solution in that case is the PhD program, okay? Uh, this is concurrent training, you're gonna jump, do plyos, sprint, so you know, all across the fast end of the spectrum, but then you're also gonna strength train heavy, you're gonna do some uh, you know, structural work, um, and we're, we're expecting that there's some good transfer there. On the other hand, if you are below the line, then you do not jump particularly well for how strong you are, okay? And that's an indication that those athletic qualities are less developed. You don't have those in place. So in this situation, getting stronger is probably not gonna help you. In fact, in my experience, athletes in this situation, if they continue to, to strength train in, in sort of the traditional way, um, it's gonna interfere. It's actually gonna prevent them from getting more athletic. Okay, because your body is, you know, maybe adapted more to the strength end of the spectrum already, or maybe it's somewhere in the middle. What you need is you need it to shift and get better on the fast end of the spectrum. And if you continue to strength train, um, you, you, you interfere with that process. Okay, so you actually have to remove strength training or, or at least minimize it and, and be very strategic with the type you use. You got to use what I would call non disruptive strength training. Um, and then you need to sprint and jump and do plyos and, and really focus on that side of the spectrum and allow your body to specifically adapt to those things. Okay, so the jump science solution to that is the shift program. So I use this graph to help people determine uh, what program they should do. 
And over the years, this concept has worked well. Okay, it's able to identify people who are disproportionately developed in the strength department and need to use that uh, explosive shift strategy. Now, if you are skeptical of that, uh, I invite you to go to my website and check out the testimonials page. Now, since we're talking about jump science programs, I got a sale going on, 20% off. Use the code STEAL. I'll put a link in the video description.